Hey there, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a personal video log, a little bit of a diet update, and maybe a little bit of cooking. Right, so today I'm gonna be using the little camcorder, which I've got further down my living room there. And I'm also using the new camera. Now I said in the last camping video, I'd had it with, with um, Hero uh, and GoPros. They were just far too unreliable. So I've now traded in my Hero 8 uh, and I've now got this thing, which is the DJI Pocket 2. And uh, it's just sat there on the, uh, the counter there. And the good thing is, you can probably see, if I switch over to this camera, you can see it's tracking me. Uh, it's got this rather cool little gimbal on the top and it's like having a little cameraman. And uh, if I zoom in, it's tracking my face, um, which is quite cool. Although the tracking on it isn't particularly good. Apparently it was actually better on the earlier model. Um, and to be honest, the tracking isn't really why I got it. Um, but anyway, I'm trying it out for the first time today. Hopefully we're gonna do okay with it. Now, as far as Rick World goes, I'm still doing my uh, keto carnival lifestyle. Uh, I've been seeking a, a permanent lifestyle that I can do, uh, which will enable me to uh, maintain, um, you know, weight loss and, um, or maintain a lower weight and uh, longevity uh, in my health. Um, I found the thing that works for me, that is keto and carnivore. I'm sort of alternating between the two as the mood goes. It seems to be the one thing that does work for me. I've made videos on this before. However, um, about, well, about six days ago, I, I hit a bit of a wall. Now this has always happened in the past. I've always been a bit of a yo-yo dieter and I generally get to about three months. There's almost like this, this cut off time uh, where, I just kind of get this, I don't know whether you want to call it appetite fatigue or just, or just hit this wall and I just can't keep doing what it is I've been doing. And as a yo-yo dieter, that's always been a little bit of a benchmark. That's where it sort of ends. You fall off the wagon, maybe for a day or two, then get back on again, and then you fall off the wagon again. And then before you know it, um, you've, you've fallen off the wagon completely. And then over the coming sort of weeks and months, you slip back into your old habits and it all, you know, all the weight that you lost goes back on again and you're back to square one again. And, and that is your garden variety yo-yo dieting story. And I, I, I'm practically an expert on that. Obviously this time around, I'm not looking to do a diet. I'm looking to do a long-term lifestyle, which I can take into my older age uh, that will hopefully keep me healthy and stop me getting all sorts of horrendous um, illnesses and conditions and all the rest of it. Obviously, there are no guarantees, but I really am a strong believer that uh, you know you have to kind of you have to meet meet it halfway. You know, um, if you do take time to you know eat foods, not necessarily what most people consider the right foods, but what foods are right for you, um, and uh, you know your sort of your diet and your lifestyle. If you can change that so that your body is telling you that it's happy with that then that's gotta be a good thing. Now, for me with carbohydrates, I was just always overweight all the time. As soon as I get involved with carbohydrates, I mean, even now I'm two stone lighter than when I started sort of 86 days ago. Um, now, if I just go back to carbohydrates and, and you know, sort of carbohydrate rich food, which I've had in the past, I know within, within very short space of time, possibly even inside, inside a month, that weight will just go straight back up again to where I was before. And, um, and whenever I was at, you know, that weight I was at before, I was just, I was always like lethargic. I had no energy. I felt inflamed. My stomach was all over the place. I had horrendous issues. Um, and so, you know, by doing keto and carnivore, I have found what works for me. And I, I kind of get this new lease of life uh, whenever I am doing them. So. I've been doing them for the last 86 days. However, on Friday, Good Friday, I hit a wall and I hit this, this point where I just could not do another keto or carnivore meal. I was absolutely clamoring for some junk food, some just, just some carbohydrates, you know. I actually fancied a, a McDonald's. I fancied a Big Mac and a McFlurry and, and all the stuff loaded with carbs. And no matter how much I tried to reason with my own sort of brain monkeys um, that, were, that were going off in my head here, 
um, I just couldn't reason with it. And so I sort of fell off the wagon. I said, I'll do one day. I'll, okay, you know, I'll, I'll have this thing that I'm craving. Uh, I won't feel guilty about it or anything like that. I'm not going to go down that, that whole psychological battle thing, which is another thing that yo-yo dieters get involved with. You know, that feeling of inadequacy because you can't do a thing that you set out to do. Um, and then you feel guilty and that just piles on the pressure to do it right. But then as the pressure piles on to do it right, it's even harder to do it right. It's, it's just this really pernicious psychological loop that you end up getting into. And I'm very aware of it. So I decided, look, this is, I'm not going to get involved with the whole guilt thing. I'm just going to go, I'm going to, going to have that McDonald's, I'm going to enjoy it. And then the next day I'll pick up where I left off. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work. The next day, the brain monkeys were still absolutely going crazy. Um, and so anyway, I sort of tried to figure out what I can do about it. So in the end, I decided, right, I'm going to step back altogether. I'm going to stop keto. I'm going to stop carnivore. I'm just going to let the brain monkeys do whatever it is they need to do to satisfy them. So I had some lots of junk food. I had, you know, just, just ate whatever I want. And after three days, the brain monkeys cleared off and I could ju just go straight back in to keto and carnivore. Um, and I think the key was just allowing it to happen without the guilt. Um, the guilt, the, the whole guilt and feeling like a failure is I think really a, a huge element in, in why people fail. Um, when they try to do this sort of thing. So here I am, the other side of hitting that wall. It, it took three days out of my journey. Um, and uh, I, oh, I, maybe four or five, because I suffered digestive issues because of it. But um, I'm now back on the wagon. I've got that particular phase out of the way. I can get back in and carry on doing keto. And that's exactly what I've uh, been doing. So I think that, of that as a success story. Um, and I think this is where I failed in the past. Um, in the past, I've always hit that wall and fell off the wagon and never got sort of properly back on again. Um, now I've figured out how to do it. So talking of which, in this video, I'm gonna do a little bit of cooking. Um, I'm gonna be going camping very shortly. Now I found when I'm doing keto and I wanna go camping, the best thing for me to do is actually take pre-prepared food. I mean, I can, cook things while I'm there, but it's, it's kind of a bit of a faff, you know, you need, you need a bit of space, you need, you've sort of got a lot of washing up and things to do. So I'm gonna make it here and then take it along with me. So I think I'm gonna get on with it and I'm gonna, first of all, make something called fathead dough. Now that is a keto staple. It's basically like bread dough, but it's made out of cheese and almond flour, and a little bit of soft cheese as well, and a few other little bits and pieces. And it acts in exactly the same way as pastry. Um, you know, like, um, sorry, not, not dough, pa pastry. Well, it, it is called fathead dough, but it is like a pastry. Um, and you can make all sorts of really nice things with it. So let's get on and make some fathead dough. Right, I've got some recipe cards, which I often turn to uh, if I'm running out of ideas on uh, what to have on keto. Uh, everything that I do like regularly, I will put onto one of these recipe cards. And they're just real quick reference. But I've also started writing out my own stuff as well. So on the backs of them. And I've got here a basic fathead dough recipe. So for this, it's basically, um, it's, Whatever you use mozzarella cheese wise, you use half almond flour. So if you're using 100 grams of mozzarella cheese, you use 50 grams of almond flour. It's always that, that sort of two to one ratio. And then a little dollop of cream cheese. Um, in my particular recipe, I'm also throwing in a little bit of coconut flour as well. Um, that just means you don't have to use quite so much almond flour, which is actually very high in calories. My camera stopped. Um filming me. Now this is the only thing with the tracking on the uh, the DJI Pocket 2. It keeps losing tracking of my face. Uh, I was just, just looked at the camera and it was pointed off over there, which is a little bit of a pain. Right then, so we've got our scales, gonna switch them on. Uh, for the basic fat head dough, I'm gonna need mozzarella cheese, almond flour, the coconut flour as well. I'm gonna mix that up and then I'm gonna stick it in the microwave 
This is um, turned into a bit of a dough. Dough. 45 grams of cream cheese. I'm gonna suggest that's about that much. Let's get an egg in there. Just gotta keep stirring it until it turns into a dough. So there we go. I've just combined all the ingredients and we've got ourselves some fat head dough. So now I'm gonna to attempt to make something called pizza pockets. So this stuff's pretty sticky. So I'm gonna be using a silicon mat to roll it out on. And uh, let's just put it on there. I'll use another one of these silicon mats. Um, I'll squish it between silicon mats. If that'll peel off, yeah it will, that's okay. We're gonna roll in pin. I'm just gonna flatten this out in a sort of rectangular shape. Right, there we go, that's much better. So I'm just gonna cut out a basic pizza pocket shape. I've never made these before, so this is um, an experiment for me as well. And I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna divide those in half like that. So we've got four potential pizza pockets there. So I'm gonna need some things to fill the pizza pockets with now. So I need to cook up a little bit of bacon. Now for this, I'm using something called bacon lardon, which is like chopped up bacon. It's not actually um, like slices of bacon as we know them, but uh, these are much more convenient um, when you're using bacon for any kind of fillings. Now I have got some homemade tallow. I actually made some bone broth and I've got this homemade tallow that I made. Um, smells okay, it smells kind of beefy, but I think it's got a slightly strange tang to it. Um, so uh, I, when I cooked um, a ribeye steak in it the other night, it had a bit of a weird flavor. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. So I'm gonna try this with some actual shop-bought beef dripping, um, just to check on the flavor, make sure it's, uh, there's not something off about that beef tallow. Right, so the oil's heated up now. Let's get these uh, lardons in there. And they won't take long at all to cook. I got a couple of mushrooms in there as well. So this is essentially gonna be a bacon and mushroom pizza. So we're going to make up the pizza pockets and then cook them in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. And that's just so that the, uh, the fathead dough can cook. Right, those are pretty close to ready now. So I'm gonna turn that off. So we're gonna be using a little bit of this tomato and basil sauce. And uh, this is gonna be kind of like the pizza sauce base. All right, and obviously these are gonna be pockets, so I just need it on half. There we go, that's all we need. So. It, Although these are reasonably high in carbs, I'm using such a small amount, it's, it's, not, it's not a problem. So then we need to put some of our bacon lardons and mushrooms on top. So there we go, that's sort of like a little pizza packet. I'm using grated mozzarella, and I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that on these. Now I'll actually have these tonight for, for my tea, because I want to know if they're any good or not. If they're any good, then I'll make up another batch tomorrow uh, so I can go camping with them. So now, I do believe my only task is to fold these pockets in half and then seal them. Okay, so the next trick is going to be sealing these around the edge. So it's gonna be a little bit fiddly by the looks of it, but I'm just gonna squish down on the fathead dough and hopefully I'll get at least some sort of a seal. Um, yeah, I think I need to make these bigger and uh, less full next time. But you get the basic principle, that's what the uh, keto pocket should look like. 
It doesn't look like a lot, but actually I imagine these are going to be actually quite filling because that fat head dough is actually quite filling. Right, I'm going to get these onto a baking tray if I can. Actually, I'll coat it with a bit of oil first, just so they don't stick. And then I'll pop those on there. I'll get another couple out of this dough and then we'll put them in the oven and see what happens. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna make an open pizza. How about that? Pizza pockets and an actual pizza itself. All right, so there we go. I've made four pizza pockets and an actual pizza uh, using the fat head dough. So let's pop this in the oven and, uh, and see how it turns out. So it's been in the oven for about nine or 10 minutes. The pizza's already bubbling up nicely. So I think I'm gonna just give it a few more seconds. Although to be honest, I think that's ready to go. I think we're there. So let's take it out and see what it looks like. There we go. So we've got ourselves pizza pockets and uh, an actual pizza, all keto, all low carb, and uh, hopefully all very tasty. So I'm gonna wait for these to cool down. And uh, like I say, this will be my tea tonight, but if the, uh, the pizza pockets are any good, then I'll make a batch of them um, for going camping at the weekend. And um, then I shall take those along with me, keep them in the fridge. And then when I want something to eat during the day, I can um, warm them up in the microwave. The same goes for sausages. I'm gonna do a big batch of this um, fat head dough. And I've got a load of sausages. Oops. I tend to go for these, uh, these black farmer sausages because they're actually quite low in carbohydrates. Uh, and what I do is I actually cut the skins off them, take the meat out, and then make the meat into like little burger patties. Um, they just cook better. And uh, what I can do is, is cook the sausages up and then I wrap the sausages in, or wrap the cooked sausages in flathead dough. And you've got these like sausage rolls. And again, they keep really well in the fridge and you can warm them up in the microwave and they make a really nice and filling meal. So it's gonna be a big, uh, big day of cooking tomorrow. And, uh, and then we're off uh, to camp the next day. So gonna make a big batch up. Um, like I say, it's gonna be Damon's birthday weekend. Um, so I've gotta make him a cheesecake as well, which should be fun. And uh, also, um, like I say, I've gotta sort myself out for uh, keto-based meals. But uh, I think we're in for a, quite a cool weekend. And I think the weather forecast is gonna be good as well. So all good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for one of these pockets. Now they're still a bit hot. Um, will it even pick up? Yeah, it does pick up. And uh, yeah, so there we go. That's, that's what it looks like. Um, so it is like a little pizza, pizza sausage roll type thing. Let's give it a try. Mmm, that's okay. I'm still on the pastry. I haven't got through to the pizza bit yet. I'm expecting that to be really hot. On the plus side, I've noticed the, um, the red tomato and basil sauce has not sort of soaked through. It's, it's, it's retained it inside the pocket, which is good. That was, I was half expecting to open the oven and see this big puddle of red juice, but that hasn't happened. They're completely dry underneath. Um, so that's good. And that means they're gonna be, do really well in the fridge and not gonna to be too messy to work with. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's try um, biting into the actual pizza bit. Hopefully I don't burn my mouth. Mmm, mmm, there we go. Hope you can see that. It tastes exactly like pizza. That's really good. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really good. Oh, that's actually better than I was expecting. Okay, so cool, there we go. That's my tea sorted out for tonight. And like I say, I'm gonna do a big batch of cooking tomorrow. I probably won't film it because I'm gonna have like loads to do and it takes a long time um, when you're filming stuff. 
anyway, be interested to get your feedback and um, let me know in the notes below what you think. Also do feel free to give any feedback on the new camera uh, that is currently tracking me, because um, we're over here. And I've just realized I haven't put my light on. So um, let me put my light on, see, what, see how it handles the, um, the light. Does it turn me into a silhouette? No, it handles it beautifully. Fine. Okay, so anyway, that is it. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of the day, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.